Good morning! Welcome to Ordinary Days, where life with God is anything but ordinary. I'm Denise Larson Cooper. My husband collects cups. Wherever he travels, he picks up a mug to commemorate the visit. We have cups from lighthouses, colleges, state parks, national parks, and various cities. There were not enough shelves in the kitchen to house all these souvenirs. So much of his collection is down in his basement office. Cups are interesting because everyone seems to have a favorite depending on the beverage. Hot chocolate requires a mug and tea requires a little cup. Coffee can be served in any size cup, but espresso should be in something small. My husband's cups are most useful this time of year when we fill them with water and dye for coloring Easter eggs. Consider this. Jesus also had a cup. He referred to this cup twice. In Matthew 20, 22, he quizzes his disciples. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? And in the garden, the night before his crucifixion, he prays, according to Matthew 26, 39, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. The cup is significant for what it held. The prophets reveal the content of Christ's cup. The beverage, according to Jeremiah, was judgment. According to Lamentation, it was the Lord's anger. Isaiah discloses that the cup held God's wrath, and Ezekiel tells us that ruin and desolation filled the cup. This cup was the punishment Christ endured for our sins. Christ emptied the cups of wrath, anger, ruin, desolation, and judgment, and then refilled the cup with God's grace, love, and forgiveness before giving it to us and saying, Drink from it, all of you. Let's pray. Father, thank you that Jesus Christ willingly drank the cup of punishment so we could drink the cup of grace. Amen. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.